Oh, Lord, please be with us tonight. Um, give us wisdom and understanding and spiritual discernment in your word and see how it applies to us and to the days we're living in. Please be with us through your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'll take the first five verses and then I'll shut up for the rest of the most of the night and you guys can have fun. Okay. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world into the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simeon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from the supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the tarot, a towel wherewith he was girded. Verse 6. And cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him and said, If I wash ye not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Verse 10. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verse 16. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. <laughs> I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. 19. Now I tell you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. I'm wondering why Peter didn't ask more questions. Like, what did he mean when he said that he was not all clean? Because he's talking about Judah. Well, he, oh, maybe, you know? yeah, because Peter didn't continue to ask. The order, the, things, the order the things happened in, he washed Judas Iscariot's feet too, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. Doesn't say he didn't. Interesting. Well, he, he knew that, I mean, John was the only one <clears throat> and the women that were at the cross. So all of the others were somewhere else. And that well, is... John fled in Gethsemane. He was the one that they pulled the garment off from and he fled naked. But he came back because he was at the foot of the cross when Jesus was dying. What, what was that again? In Gethsemane, when they were arresting, um, when they were arresting Jesus, uh, it, in one of the Gospels, it says something about one of the soldiers or somebody grabbed one of them by the garment and that that person fled without their garment. And in... Ellen White or something, it said that it was John. 
But he came back because he was at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mother. Right. I wonder where the others were. Watching from a ways off. Hi, Craig. Go ahead, Brian. Just going to say the question I have is in verse 10. What does he mean when he says, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet? What does he mean by bathed? Anybody have any baptized? ideas? What do you mean baptized? Oh, that's a good one. I don't know. Hmm. That's why I'm asking. Well if, you're, well, if you're baptized, if you're in the church and you've been baptized, the right. Lord's Supper and the and the foot washing ceremony is washing your feet. Right. But what but what does it represent? Us, us forgiving and cleansing. Him cleansing us and us forgiving each other. So well, is I, think that, I think that feet are very symbolic of where you go. Mm -hmm. You know how how beautiful the town and the mountain are the feet of them that bring good news. Yes. Feet are also a symbol of dominion. Everywhere your foot shall tread upon, I have given it unto you, said the Lord. Fear them right. not. Right. So you know, we all of the sin came into this world when we lost our dominion. Our self-control right. and, and the plan of salvation is about restoring that lost self-control which is connected that's why if you just wash the feet you're all clean because it's symbolic of how jesus is looking to restore to us that lost dominion through what through his sacrifice mm -hmm. wow that <laughs> that makes sense but again, does this mean that what is the bathe? What is being bathed mean? When you when you, I'm thinking it's in the context of Judas. So is he suggesting that Judas wasn't bathed? He didn't accept the washing. Ah. We see the the meaning of the word in the concordance says to bathe to wash. Of a dead person, interesting, and washing to cleanse blood out of wounds. Whoa. So we are dead in trespasses and sins. Hmm. It's interesting. I, I, I think of it as um, uh, believed, like Abraham believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness. So there's, and, and I associate believed with justification. So this believing, I'm wondering if that was the difference between Judas and the rest of the disciples, the ones that Jesus said that he had chosen. <clears throat> I know whom I have chosen. Yes, now that word is used and say also the, the washed word or bathed. Revelation 1 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Also, Hebrews 10 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So this is this is what Christ has done for us, right? Hence the blood, meaning the life, right? Mm -hmm. His life has washed us. But again, it comes down to the individual accepting it or believing in it. Maybe. <laughs> it certainly seems to be your your evil conscience has to be washed, and and you know obviously Judas resisted that. 
You know that. You know yeah. we talk. We you see in the scriptures that right before they they come to this scene, they were still arguing about who would be chief just, in, in the kingdom. Right. And they still had that mindset of wanting to, you know, be the best and be over everybody else and Instead be right more time. honored than others. And Judas, Judas was the one who was really instigating that kind of talk among all of them. It's also and, interesting. And, and he, he didn't let it go. When, when Jesus did the foot washing service, it was so humiliating for him to do that even as a man never mind as the king of the universe and and that totally for the rest of them it, it knocked out that that desire to rule over but it didn't for judas he clung to it Which My, is uh, go ahead go ahead brian i just think it's interesting that you know it his actions really revealed that he wasn't cleansed from that guilt. Yes. Because that guilt is what drove him to take his own life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, My, my um, little speech here that said from um, Desire of Ages, it said this action opened the eyes of the disciples Bitter shame and humiliation filled their hearts. They understood the unspoken rebuke and saw themselves in altogether a new light. So Christ expressed his love for his disciples. Their selfish spirit filled him with sorrow, but he entered into no controversy with them regarding their difficulty. Instead, he gave them an example they would never forget, which was washing their feet. Yeah. You also have to take this to the context of, of any feast that typically this went on at any feast that somebody's, the servants came in and washed the, the feet of the people who were going to be eating. In this particular instance, according to, again, Desire of Ages, there's no servant there to do it. And that's why the disciples are kind of mingling among themselves and, and complaining. There's no servant there to wash their feet. And then when Jesus goes to do it, he just shows them that uh, the king of the universe, uh, the Lord of Lords, will get down on his knees, will, will humble himself. Um, uh, <clears throat> if you do it in that context, right. it's... I think, and I'm surprised that, well, Judas is, Judas hardened his own heart, but it's got to move something within you to see the one that you feel is the King of Kings, the Messiah, down in front of you, washing your feet. Um, and it went back, and I don't know if somebody said something, but, um, you know, all the dust of the roads on the feet, all of the, all of that. Um, the rest of the body didn't get quite as dirty as the feet. And so it was like a, probably a symbolic washing of all that dirt, that sin away. But I, I don't know. Just, just speculation on some things. Well, you know, just the very act that they were all trying to figure out who was going to do the washing and the rebuke was when Jesus did it. You know, and I think it's so funny when we, when we do our foot washing, our feet are clean before we, you know, even get oh, to yeah. church usually. But I, I, I love that um, Dan brought that up because I've often thought about what it must have been like to see that dirt and mud kind of billowing off of somebody's feet into the basin. And what a beautiful symbol of how sin gets washed away. And, um, you know, how neat it would be mm -hmm. if our feet really were dirty when we did foot, foot washing at church. Amen. Maybe we should all go to church with dirty feet. <laughs> Not in the winter. Not in the winter. Well, if you want to if you want to be like the disciples, then you need to walk on the roads, walk in the cow plops. And the their feet weren't just a little bit dirty. They were dirty, dirty. To go along with Sue, you know, there's an old adage, if you, you hire a cleaning agency, how much cleaning have you got to do before they get there? <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> wow. I, I like the fact that um, he says, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And that's really the basis of the whole argument 
argument between him and the church. They were doing it on their own. And everyone has to come to Jesus to be cleansed. So it's yeah. kind of a neat, it's kind of a neat lesson there, parallel. If he doesn't both clean you and restore you, then you're not restored. And you have to be willing to be cleaned and restored. Yes, or you can't. Yeah, you can't be saying there's nothing wrong with me. And I, he this just jumped uh, into my head, and I, I, I apologize. I don't apologize for it. No, it's no. like you think about if you put yourself in Jesus's place. The last place on earth I want to be is with these arguing disciples. I want to be on my knees in front of God asking for whatever it will take so that um, I don't go to that cross. But here he is. He, he's forego foregone that, if you will. And he's spending time with these disciples to show them just what his kingdom is going to be like, just where they have to be. Yeah. He's trying to help them survive the wake-up call, if you want to call it that. That's going to come very shortly when they see him get crucified. Because it hasn't sunk into their heads, although he's told them time and time again what's going to happen. They don't seem to be able to hear it. It's just too far from their expectations. You talk about the great disappointment. Boy, they got an awful shock. And then they even forgot that he was going to be resurrected. <coughs> they thought it was all over. Oh, you said it so many times. I know. And it's kind of like they just, I don't know why they couldn't hear it, but they didn't. The same reason why we don't hear it. We don't want to hear it. We want to go our way. We want we want to play God. And now I will try to shut up. I'm, my throat is really getting bad. I'm sorry, Dan. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. Were you trying? <laughs> You're doing really well. Uh, well, I admire you for putting the thing up tonight, the shape you're in. It also says Christ was instituting a religious service by the act of our Lord humiliating in this humiliating ceremony was made a consecrated ordinance. It was to be observed by the disciples that they might ever keep in mind his reasons, you no, know, his lessons of humility and service. I thought I was going to be quiet, but I'm not. You, you notice who, talk, who speaks up? You notice who probably gives, you know, what well, every one of those disciples except Judas had in his heart. Of, you know, Peter, verse 8 yeah. and 9. Mm -hmm. Or not Peter's, but uh, on 9. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's doing a lot of the talking, and, and he even doesn't realize it, but he's being rebuked there, too. Well, Peter doesn't... Peter doesn't want him to humiliate himself by washing his feet. Well, but he wants him to wash but, his whole body. Yeah. I love Peter. <laughs> I relate. It's like, <laughs> not, my, not just my feet, Lord. Take all of me. You know, I want, I want you to have all of me. Peter's a lot like me. Big mouth, impetuous, all in or all out, you know? You needed to learn some, some control. I've always identified with him. Well, you know, you never had to figure out where Peter was coming from. Even before he was, he got the Holy Spirit, he, he spoke. He always seemed to speak from what was in his head. You know, a lot of people couch their, their words and stuff and, and make it acceptable. But Peter just let it out and, you know, let the words fall. And, and he does take the rebukes. I mean, when, when Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, you know. And the difference between him and, and Judas Iscariot is that Peter does end up denying him. 
and Peter's heartbroken over it. But Peter remembers that Jesus said that he would pray for he was praying for him. And he said, and, and when you are when you are converted, strengthen your brother. So he held on to that and he made it through. Now Judas, you know, if Judas had repented, he could have done the same thing, but <coughs> when we, when we uh understand that uh, Christ knew everything that was going to happen and how it was going to happen and everything. Um, it has to, it, it says an awful lot about him that knowing that they're all going to abandon him, but yet he, he wants to show them what it's like. He wants to show them his love. Mm -hmm. and that, that's just, that's something that's amazing. Just, isn't that what draws us to him, though, Dan, is his love for us? <sighs> I mean, it breaks my heart, the places that he, he pursued me into to try to retrieve me. At this minute, yes. And then, tw you know, 20 minutes from now, here I am doing something stupid or saying something you know that isn't in line and it's like oh man here we go again <laughs> yeah congratulations dan i think you're still human regrettably yeah, well, so am i <laughs> i think it's interesting they they all thought they were the ones who would betray him when they yeah, said isn't it, it interesting that they all said, is it me? Is it mm -hmm. me, Lord? I mean, and Jesus told them, he said, when, when you see me dipping this, dipping my bread and giving it to this person, you know, you'd think they'd be watching. And John, you know, he said that they, to John. I'm not sure how many of the others heard him say that. Because John was leaning up against Jesus when he said that to him. You don't think the other disciples heard that? Not very, not all of them. Not many of them. He said that to John so it would get written down. Hmm. I must compare this. <sighs> because we had look at verse 24. It says, Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him speaking about John, that he should ask who it would be. And then John, who was lying on Jesus' breast, said to him, so he's laying across his chest, he said, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered to him. So I, how many of the others heard it? I don't know. Well, he my said, Bible just said that Jesus answered. Uh, and then, and then, after the sop was given to Judas, Jesus said to him, that that thou doest do quickly. And no one else knew what he was talking about. Judas got up and left. I think we jumped ahead, didn't we, Dan? Yeah. Oh, we have a habit of doing that to poor Dan. And Lori isn't even here to blame. S Sister White says that when Jesus said that, you know, he who my put the sop in is the one that Judas didn't hear him. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's why he didn't even realize that he had been identified when he did it. No, but when he said that to Jesus, to Judas about that, that do, thou dost do quickly, he got up and left mm -hmm. then. But mm -hmm. none of the others understood what he was saying to him. No. I don't even know if Judas understood what he was saying to him. Hmm. I think Judas did. Knew what he was about to do. Well, he had some gall to come back and kiss him in the garden then as he betrayed him. Have you ever done something, though, that you didn't realize was going to get so out of hand? Who was that, Willow? That's Willow, yes. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> she wants me to throw the toy across the room for her to go <laughs> six feet and pick it up. 
<laughs> For the 75th time in the past two hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm <mean>, late. <laughs> yeah, I went down to take him to the store today and got mugged by both dogs. <laughs> they're loving. I know, they're, they are precious. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, he's never, he never covers up what he's saying. He never puts it when he's talking to his disciples. He never says anything that they wouldn't understand. Throughout this whole time he's with them, he's very, almost always explicit about what he's saying. And yet it goes right over their head anyway. Tell us, Dan. Well, it, it, again, it's it's the way I feel that in certain situations, you've got your preconceived notions and people can be telling you one thing and you're not listening to them because you've got your agenda. And I think that's, you know, <clears throat> um, if I got to the fact that I'm going to make this man king, mm -hmm. nothing is going to move me from that because that's what I feel in my heart should be done until the cross and more retrospect then of course things start changing and then when the holy spirit is put in there then it's a whole new ball game but <clears throat> in the heat of the battle if you will in the heat of the day interactions with people nine times out of ten um you're barely hearing what they're telling you because you have got what you want to get out of this conversation, what you want to get out of this day. And it just, it's hard to break that. It really is. <clears throat> it really is. You're right. Yeah, I, I just had that happen with my son. He thought he even knew when you're trying to, And even when you're trying to <clears throat> communicate clearly, what you say and what you mean may not be at all what they hear. Mm -hmm. And I think as human beings, you know, being a special educator, it takes a certain amount of cognitive ability for people to hold on to a thought because they know what they're thinking they want to say next. And then to be hearing and processing the information that's coming in at the same time. So I think. It's right. just sort of a, a natural tendency for us because our brains are not, you know, functioning the way God had originally intended them to function either. Good not to make an excuse for it, but it, it is part of our human condition. So it is yeah. now. And there, there mm -hmm. are also others who just don't want to hear, mm -hmm. you know. You know, in the street slang, you know, I'm trying not to hear that or talk to the hand. Right. Um, <laughs> some people have that mindset that they just don't want to hear. Well, you're so busy figuring out what you're going to say. You don't hear yes. what someone else is saying. There, there's the other, no, go ahead, Craig. No, go ahead. Well, I also think that there's the... <clears throat> the uh, even with all of Pastor Tim's teaching, I think there's times it's very hard for us to get out of this human world this, and get into the spirituality of what Christ wants us to learn and listen. That we, We've got 60 some odd years of this world and in, in, in order to move into that world of Christ, it, it takes something that... I think it takes giving up on our, giving ourselves up. And I don't think we do that very readily, that we like to keep who we are and just play God and look very humble and everything, but play God deep inside of us. Well, I'm going to go somewhere where... <laughs> go ahead, Sue. What, what I okay, see. I'll shut you off. All right, well, um, I think he's taking them through a walk through the sanctuary i see that the water and then i see the bread 
which is in the sanctuary. And then I see this, which is the most holy place. And he says it in 36. Where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow me afterwards. Most holy place. I don't know if everyone, if, if you see what I'm seeing. I, d I see it. It, it. It's it's the walk. He's bringing them through the walk, right? The laver is where the, the water bin is, is where, right? It's in the outer court, right? Right. right. And he's and walking going into, into the most, you're going into the holy place. The showbread. Where the showbread is. And then he tells him in 36, he asked him, where are you going? And he says, where am I going? You cannot follow me, but you shall follow me afterwards. After he's on the cross. That's right. I see and the it. curtain is rent. Then Peter is able to follow him into the most holy place. Um, I'm, I mean, it's following Jesus wherever he goes. And that, that's what I see. It may not be, but that's what comes out to me. As oh, I'm I see it, it now that you mention it. I see Sounds it. good to me. It's beautiful. But Peter did follow him right to the cross because he was right. turned upside down. Right. But when, when Christ, you know, when we, when we are to follow Christ wherever he goes, and that's what he wanted to do, I want to follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Well, I, and I he's saying, you, you can, will. Yeah. You will, but not right now because I haven't completed what I'm here to complete. Yeah, and that, that's it. I see it, so. Well, that's what he was doing is he was making a way for us to be able to follow him wherever mm -hmm. he goes. Mm -hmm. The labor. They were in the labor when he was washing their feet. Wow. And the bread. I mean, that's just what I see. That's not, you know. The sanctuary service really does depict an awful lot of the other stuff in the Bible, doesn't it? There's it's everything in it's everything in it's about Jesus. But if you really do just that digging and, and that understanding, it it. And the it washing is. he's talking about too is 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 the inner heart, the mind, and it's just that example, it's that transformation that he wants to do in us and through us. Because he continues afterwards, and he says, "Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives me, whoever I send, receives me, and he who receives you receives him who sent me." Right? Mm -hmm. So you're receiving him in that, right? Wow. Very, very beautiful. This world has so far bypassed Sodom and Gomorrah, it makes me cringe and I don't even want to be here anymore. Well, doesn't it say it'll be worse then? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, huh? I, I think we bypassed them about 50 years back. <laughs> no, it's probably a couple months ago. <laughs> I just keep remembering, you know, that it's supposed to be fast. I really like verse 19. Now I tell you before it comes, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. The he is added at the end. Right. Just it's that I am. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, knowing what's going to happen before it's going to happen and mm -hmm. prophesying and telling things in advance is an attribute of, of God mm. his eternal yeah. existence and they should get that because they know that he that God is called the I am he said I am oh yeah so they get that they should get that there that they know what he was saying but at this point they did believe that he was the Messiah right I, I believe think so. I believe so too. The only thing is, is what, what they wanted to do was they wanted to send up, or send up. They wanted to put his earthly kingdom into place now. Right. That's that's the kind of Messiah they thought he was, yes. and that hasn't changed. That's what the world, That's what most of the Christian world is looking oh, for. I'm right talking now. about. 
I'm talking about the Jewish nation who is meeting yep. with the Messiah right now. Yep. I saw yeah. that too. But that but the Christian a lot of the Christian denominations are waiting for Christ to come back and set up a thousand year millennium here on earth. So come on, Luke. Well, you know, I remember when it says you look when when he says if you hear someone saying he's in the east or he's in the west, don't go. Yep. So they're expecting him to be coming to this earth to again to walk, right? Yep. Well, I they're just as just, just wrong this time around as they were the first time around. Because they're looking at the Bible and they aren't even seeing what's right there in front of their noses. I remember how much stuff do we miss? I remember being confused by that particular first there when it says no no that that it's not me you're going to hear these things that that the messiah has come to earth i'd forgotten all about that one where is that does anybody know i don't i just remember it well you remember it rightly the, where what was again where the where the verse is where where he said that if he, they told him that the Christ was in the in the plane, oh, I believe that's in Matthew twenty four. Matthew twenty four. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the signs of the end. Yeah. So people on this. I mean, I was thinking that you know, well, if they tell me that he's in in over in Asia, then I wouldn't want to go there. No. That was in my ignorance and my innocence before I knew anything. I remember reading that and thinking, well, I wouldn't go there then. Because he says, you know, you're going to hear this. So they are still expecting a Jesus to come to the earth then. Well, right? if, if you haven't ever been in any of the other Protestant denominations, uh, most of them are expecting, they're looking at Israel and they're expecting Christ, Christ, they've got it backwards, not a thousand years in heaven. They've got it a thousand years on the earth. They're expecting Christ to come back, come down to the earth, not meet us in the clouds or anything. Come down to the earth and set up a thousand year millennium here on the earth. You know, they've got it backwards. Hmm. I know I went through two denominations like that before I became an Adventist. <laughs> I haven't thought about that one for a long time. I guess I've just gotten used to thinking that he's going to come in the clouds and any human who roams around the earth isn't going to be Jesus. Well, they aren't going to be. You know, they said when he when he was taken up the Two angels that were standing there beside them said that he would come back in the same manner in which they saw him go, which was in the clouds. <laughs> this I world's going to turn into a real zoo. I think it's interesting. As soon as as Judas betrays him, the first thing he, he says is, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Right. And if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. So he realizes he's, he's now for sure going to the cross because that's what, what Judas has just left to do is to betray him. And, but that he's, he's looking at this, you know, terrible, torturous death, but he's calling it his glory. Yeah. yeah and, he, and he also uses the word immediately. Yes. He realizes it's. Mm -hmm. He knows. It's I mean, it's Passover. <laughs> the time is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Blood on the doorpost. He was the blood on the doorpost for them, right there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> by the way, a Jew, I believe, was supposed to stay in the house and not go out. But Judas goes out. Judas goes out. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Judas chooses to leave his presence. Yep.
Yeah. I mean, I know that Judas did what he did. But I really feel sorry for him because he had a choice. Yeah, he chose himself. Right. <laughs> I know, but it just I just feel bad that he didn't get it, that he had to he had to die. I mean, his... oh, no, no, no. No, no, because Christ knows when that time comes, we know we've made the choice. Right. So it's not like, surprise. Right. I mean, he knew when he walked out. But I, Which, I wonder if he was still thinking maybe he could avoid it. I don't know. Judas did not think that he was going to allow himself to be taken or he was going to die. Judas was trying to force him into a position where he would show his power and prove that he was the Christ and make him set up his kingdom. That's what he was trying to force. Mm -hmm. That's why he went out and killed himself when he saw that Jesus was not going to show his power or use his power and that he was going to allow himself to get killed. That's why he went back and threw the money back at them and said that he had betrayed innocent blood. He didn't think that's the way it was going to work out. It's not what he intended. What he intended he, to do was... Even at that point, he could have repented. But. Uh, yeah, he could have. Right in the garden, when Jesus said to him, friend. Betray the mm -hmm. son of man with a kiss. Friend. <laughs> He, the he, only he, way we really know that he didn't repent is that Ellen White wrote in her books that, that he that he killed himself because of um what how was it put? Fear of judgment, fear of the coming judgment, not because he repented. If he'd repented and killed himself as a way of atonement, he he'd Probably be in heaven, but she said he never yeah. repented. There, there was a long series of of choices leading up to that, of him hardening his heart against conviction. Mm -hmm. right. And not acting on the truth that he was learning. And, and making it part of his life that, his that character, to, right? led to the culmination of the decision here. Yeah. Again, I think he was based in this human world where, you know, you do something like that to somebody, they're going to have revenge on you. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I, I can't, I can't put myself in, you know, into that, but um, mm -hmm. having that... Having that much anguish to um, want to work on feelings and not on, you know, faith uh -huh. and trust. When Peter betrayed him and then Jesus looked at him, it broke Peter's heart. But Peter didn't go out and commit suicide. Peter went out and, and wept. And Peter thought about what Jesus had said to him. And he knew because Christ had looked at him with love and compassion. I, I, I believe he still felt hope. Well, when you look at 36, he gave him his confirming word, right? Because he says, where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you shall follow me afterward. Right. That had to ring with him. You right. know? Yeah. yeah. You shall follow me, and shall is a very strong word. Because he knew he knew Peter's heart, and he knew um, the Peter fear. would be converted. Well, he knew he knew he knew human fear. Are we going you know, to get? He... Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I'm I'm just saying at that time he was, you know. He didn't know what was going on, yet he is watching something that he didn't expect to happen. And, um, you know, at, at, at the end of it, you know, 
when he heard the crow cock crow. Yeah. yeah. And he hear he hears Jesus's his his, his voice. That's pretty packed, isn't it? You know, you, you read this and you read it. I mean, I've read it so many times. And then when you finally read it with the Holy Spirit and, and understanding, it's it's packed full of all kinds of things. You know, in 33, he says, little children, I know. <laughs> I shall be with you for a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews... Where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. That's, um, he's talking to the church right there. Yeah. He's talking to all of them. He's talking to Israel. And he, and he, in verses 34 and 35, he mm -hmm. kind of tells them what's missing. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to love like I love. Yep. Not, not just love one another like you love yourself, but as Jesus has loved. Yeah, which is loving all, just not in their denomination. Yeah, because so. at that time, they were supposed to be the ones that were going to be drawing them to Christ, hmm. drawing them to God, drawing them to the Father. It, it wasn't a, a, a selfish, self-saving love um, is, is what they put out there. And they could actually see it at that time, right? Well, maybe afterwards, as, they're, as the apostles are still meeting at the temple and, and still prophesying about who he was and who he is. Well, and you know... Up until that point, they had been bickering back and forth, too. You know, up to that point where they had the, the last supper there. <clears throat> you know, who's going to be first? Who's going to be second? And he's saying to them now, he's saying, I'm giving you a new commandment to love one another. And see how I'm doing it. And how is Jesus loving them? Unconditionally. Yep. He's preparing to go to the cross because he loved them. Right. Total self-sacrifice. And that's what he calls us to do. <coughs> we need to go to the cross for one another. Even for somebody that hates you. Yeah, because that's who are Jesus you if did. you love those are lo that are lovable? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of was shocked because, um, you know, it says in there that, well, a man might lay down his life for a friend or, you know, he said that, you know, blessed is a person that lays down a life for a friend. But, you know, in dream I had a while ago, I saw that we might be asked to lay down our lives for somebody that we had every reason to hate. That reminds me of Corey Ten Boom when she met that German soldier. Yeah. That was incredible how God showed allowed her to reach out and take his hand and forgive him. That was Jesus. Yep. Yeah, and I think in my notes it says their mutual love would be the strongest possible argument for the Christian faith. And that is for the least of these. So anybody's comments on John 13, 18? He called all the other disciples, didn't he? But Jesus, Judas just kind of came along and chose, came along with him, didn't he? Yeah, that's what Sister White says in Desire of Ages. He just yeah. kind of joined sort of with them. Invited and himself. It. Yeah. Also, he was yeah, he was never chosen. I wondered how he ended up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> he was chosen from the foundation of the world. I don't know what you mean. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and the scripture might be fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah, Psalms 41 9. Hmm. So he was an individual was chosen from the foundation of the world to be this one. Right. Or may, maybe not was may not be chosen, but someone was going to take take the opportunity. Someone was going to do this anyway. We all we all have a reason for being born, right? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, if God knows the end from the beginning, he knows every choice we're ever going to make before we're even born. And um, Psalm 41.9, it says, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. He's quoting scripture. And he's telling them. Because in the garden he said, Betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? Thou shalt crush his head, but he shall bruise thy heel. Well, and isn't it wild because the one after it was talking about her kissing, has not stopped kissing his feet. So you have the kiss and the feet instead of the kiss and the heel. Since at the time I came in. You sometimes wonder the way things are worded. Um, the, you, you don't know if it was two o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon, what time it was. Judas went out and it was night. It was there was darkness. Yep. Oh my. Yep. There you go. Yep, he left the light for the darkness. Yeah. Well done, well said. That is so amazing. You know, this is another one that it said now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. He made his decision. He, Satan was already Christ. in there. Yeah, Satan was already in there, but that's when he finalized. Must be when he finalized his his plan. Well, the, temp the temptation to sin was there, right? And he right? finalized it in his mind. He chose it. Uh, right. Then, Being then tempted the spirit was is removed, not the so. sin. And the spirit was what? The spirit was removed, the restraining spirit was removed, and he just followed on his will to do what he mm -hmm. wanted. Every every good inclination that we have comes from God. It's not natural. <laughs> right. And if he stops restraining you, you're just going to do evil. <laughs> Each oh. one of us. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds kind of like, um, you know, in Revelation, it talks about the angels of holding back the four corners mm. and it's being let go. And it's the same thing. Um, it's, and that's how evil is going to start just really ramping up. It's person by person by person. Mm. So I was thinking about what he said and, and, that would be the enmity being taken away. So there was no longer anything restraining the evil, right? Hmm. Well, he's hardened his heart against it. God just doesn't arbitrarily take it away. Right. It's, made his uh, choice. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I'm, with, I'm with you, Craig. I'm um, what was it, Friday night's meeting when the guy was saying uh, God moving away from us? No, mm -hmm. God's always right there. We are the ones who back away from him. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. In my Bible, it says, until this step was taken, Judas had not passed beyond the possibility of repentance. But when mm -hmm. he left the presence of his Lord and his fellow disciples, his final decision had been made. 
he had passed the boundary line. Yes, he left the he left the light for darkness. Yep. And he before his- death, each soul has made their decision for or against Christ. Well, when Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. I know he was at the, in the garden, he was saying, if this cup can pass from me. But he still knew it was going to glorify God, his going to the cross. Right? We lose Jane. We lost Jane. Maybe. Huh. Have we talked about how beautiful verse one is? <laughs> no, we didn't. When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I think that his his heart knew that this was for everyone, but he did not want to leave them. He loved them, mm-hmm. you know. God hates the separation. Yeah, yeah. That's why he has a whole plan of that one man mm-hmm. <laughs> to end the separation. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it's interesting because in verse 3 it says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and he was going home, he was going to God, this was going to be Jesus' hour. Do you know what I mean? This When he knew that he was going to the cross, what he was going to do, and when he came back, the rest of it was just God's glory when he rose from the dead and he took his disciples as he descended. Well, the thing that was on his heart, too, is I have kept the ones that you have given me. Right. I you love know, my prayer verse. is that, you know, that you would keep the evil one from them and just his heart's desire. Um, that's just so beautiful. John 17, when I read that and when I read it now, it just, to me, that is his love just being poured out. It, it It's the most beautiful chapter, I think, is, is John 17. Can't wait till we get to that one. <laughs> That'll be good. He, he knew since the Passover when he was 12 what his fate was. Mm-hmm. He yeah. must be about yeah. his father's work. And now it's the, the Passover when he knows the time has come for him to become the sacrifice. Well, if I'm still around at the end, I pray that I will glorify God. Every every day for, for, till then. Yeah. Till oh then. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to keep it up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm thinking ahead to, you know, the more you learn about what the prisons were like and what went on during the dark ages and all of those times, you know, it makes you aware of just and you see what's going on in, in other countries. We're we're ignorant if we think that can't happen to us. You know, in Germany and in those countries, those people didn't believe. And even after the war, when they finally went into the camps and they saw what ha- what the Germans had done, they lived right in the towns next to them. And they had no idea what was going on in those camps. Yeah. Pray, pray that you allow God to glorify himself in you. Amen. Nothing we can do that will give him glory except letting him manifest his glory in us. Amen. So that they won't see us any longer, but just him in us. Yeah. Amen. That's that's the fullness of yeah. Christ. 
That's, That's my the point. character of Christ. It requires your consent continuously. Yes. yes. That's all. That's yeah. all you can do is consent. You know, and when we're really prayerful about that and um, just allowing God's love to be reflected through us, people see it. They really do um, recognize that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard to stay that way all the time because we're human. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the prayer of my heart almost every morning. Is Amen. That, um, yeah. You know, I, I have contact with so many people in a day and just that it could even be a, a simple exchange that you have with somebody in the line at the grocery store yeah. that makes an impact. Oh, um, yeah. Just allowing God to use you in those situations. Well, I'm going to go to my sons for Thanksgiving, and I'm praying that they will see God in me. That is my prayer, that they will see God. Yeah. Oh. So you could all pray for me. Amen. We sure. will. Thank you. It, it's... Yeah, keep on praying that he will be in you. Mm-hmm. And that none of none of the actions that you take or do are yours, right? That they'll but be they are again. his. Yep. And you know, as as much as we want our family to see, you know, they have. It's Christ that has to work in them. So that should be your prayer before you even get there. That is is, my is is praying for for the softening of their heart for their salvation yeah. and that there's a rightness in you and um yeah and for the opening of their ears and their eyes um because you know there's that veil yes and that deafness that um stops people from hearing and seeing mm -hmm. and so a lot of times like i pray that Yep. In certain situations. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, it, I, pray, I pray for <laughs> God to uh, open the way for spiritual conversations, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it's good. Yeah. In, in a way that they'll be receptive, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Lord, don't open up my mouth, but if you want me to speak, speak through me like you spoke through the donkey. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, use the donkey. Stop me. <laughs> we'll have Maggie do the talking. She's the dog. <laughs> or Hazel the cat. <laughs> and sometimes we're asked to be silent. And that's hard, too. Well, I'm praying my countenance doesn't show when certain things are said and done that are hard. Mm -hmm. then you then you need to go back to read a new commandment i give to you that you will love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another by this you will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another amen see that love that christ gives you is like a duck whose the water just rolls off that back amen it's waterproof and God's love is, is, is just that there's, there's no arrow that would penetrate it. Mm. You know, it's Enjoy just, it. amen. You know, yeah. just, you know, as you're there, just keep on lifting them up. You know, this, this, this is our family is the hardest. It it's really the is. hardest. It is the hardest. So, um, yeah just i am praying for all the armor and all the love there you go read it before you go yep. put on the helmet of salvation read that whole whole deal that's you know? an ephesian you know. psalm 91 you know <laughs> yes guard your heart and your mind uh, the family is the hardest because they're the ones we care the most about mm -hmm. yes well, even Jesus sent them to their families first. 
on their first outing there. And the second one he, he sent, you know, when you see how he even did it with his disciples, right? Mm -hmm. And it is. And well, because you love them so much that you want them to be saved. Right. And yeah, claiming promises. And I think what's hard with, you know, people we're so familiar with is we have a history. And mm -hmm. sometimes that history makes it harder. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's almost easier with a stranger because mm -hmm. we don't have all of that preconceived stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, Sue. It is. Yeah. And not only that, they should... I think the most important thing I learned with my kids and my sons in, in these last five years of... My perception of God to them was not a God of love. Mm -hmm. I was in a legalistic mind. Yes. And until they see the change in me, and I should be continually growing, continuing the character of Christ there. And, um, and that's what I pray for, that, that Lord, you know, Keep on working on my mind and my heart that they may see you, that they may see that who I was mm. is not who I am now. Amen. That when you talk about when those things, those sharp arrows come at you, um, that they have no penetration because you're wearing Amen. on the armor of Christ and that you can still lovingly, you know, well, can yeah, I help I you with that or what, whatever that, whatever that is. And, and your mindset has to be of that, that thank you, Lord, for coming with me. Yeah. I love that you're here with me. Yeah. Amen. You're right. Yeah. Cause Satan wants so much to damage the, the heart and the mind again and to do it through family. And and God, yeah. Has, yeah, God's given us all another chance, and I'm thankful. He's never let us go. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, Christ, Christ said, you know, prophets, you know, honored anywhere but his own, you know, among his own. He experienced it. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. he did, didn't he? Yeah. You know, they, they, you know, when they remember the way you were, even if you're different, that <laughs> sort of for some people, that's like a, a stumbling block. But then God, God will send them somebody else. Amen. You can, you mm -hmm. can pray mm -hmm. that God sends them somebody else. Mm -hmm. Who they will listen to. Amen. Amen. Who, they, who they don't have that mental block with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And just knowing how he's worked in us and how he has been healing us of our lifetime of lies, deceptions, hurts, and, and, and is um, binding up our wounds. And what he covers them with is the salve of his love. Yeah. So that the, the experience of all of those things gives you the compassion for others because you've been there been there and there i don't know about you but there's nothing better than someone sitting down and really understanding where you're coming from i mean that's what christ <laughs> did he, he he understood where they were coming from you know yeah father in heaven we come to praise and give you honor and glory we come to thank you so much for the, the mind that you have given us. We thank you for that Holy Spirit that you put within us that we can respond to and learn of your character to become more godlike, to become more like you, Lord. And as we become more like you and we are changed, we are able to show that empathy to others, that we are able to um, just be able to show others just what it is that you have in store for them. So this evening, I pray for Cynthia, for Sue and Greg, for Don and Sue, for Craig, for Julia, for Jeff and Lori, for Jim, uh, Brian, Sharon, um, 
for all those who have attended and will attend our study we just we just pray for them and just ask that uh, they will join us they will give us insight into their lives and into our family they will um give us food for thought if you will into your scripture word that we may be um, changed that we may be more like you every day that we may bring others not bring others to you but we may show you to others just the way you are lord as we as we close this i just pray that uh, <clears throat> your coming is soon and we know it will be because uh, after death the next thing we will know is is you coming in the clouds of glory lord be with us help us to um live in this world but not to be of the world but to live in your kingdom and to have your commandments to have your laws written on our heart you, to bring us ever closer to you bring us closer to each other to uh truly be a family in you i pray in christ's name amen